Joining me now is Democratic Senator Tammy Duckworth, a wounded combat veteran who was among the first Army women to fly combat missions during the Iraq War. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, Senator, Senator Duckworth, I'm just kind of uh, actually gobsmacked by what has happened. We're just hearing from Peter Baker that John Bolton has texted him as well, saying that he offered to resign and resign today. So that version is differing very much from the firing version that comes from the president. Where does this leave the troops, having served in Iraq and knowing the troops in Afghanistan as a member of armed services? How does this make people in the f troop on the front lines feel when they see such disarray in Washington? Well, they're going to feel stranded, Andrea. They, they're, they're doing their job. We've asked them to step up, to leave their families behind, to go into harm's way and defend America. And yet the very top leadership, from the commander-in-chief to his closest advisors, can't seem to get their act together and can't seem to come up with a cohesive uh, uh, approach to uh, what we're doing in the Middle East, whether it's Iraq or, or Afghanistan or Syria. Um, this is a real problem. You know, our troops are in harm's way right now, and we expect them to get up and do their jobs, and yet... We don't have a president or a national security advisor who is willing to do their jobs. Ask you about the excuse the president gave over the weekend. He said he canceled the talks, canceled the Camp David meeting because of the death of the service member Ortiz uh, on Thursday. I believe he was killed by the by the Taliban as well as eleven other people, including a Romanian officer or, or service member. But in fact. There had been a service member killed the week before, an American mm -hmm. service member killed the week before, and days after that, Ambassador Khalilzad was sent back to finalize the deal and arrange these meetings. So they did not cancel the meeting when one service member was killed. It seemed to be an excuse, and then a, a quickly arranged visit to Dover by the Secretary of State Saturday night with almost no notice for the, um, for the return of his remains to his family. Tell me how you react to all of that. It seems as though the service member's death was being used as cover for this failed policy and for the fact that the Afghan government was not going to participate in what looked like a charade at Camp David. Well, I, I react with disgust at these actions by the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Armed Forces to use a fallen service member uh, for his own political gain um, should be shocking. But unfortunately, with this President, this Commander-in-Chief, it's not shocking. He's shown that he has no respect for our service men and women, and certainly he has no respect for the fallen or their families. He's been known to certainly insult uh, uh, the family members of our, of our heroic dead. Uh, frankly, uh, what was he doing inviting the Taliban to Camp David in the first place? What was what was he thinking on the same week as the anniversary of 9-11? I mean, that, that is an insult and it's uh, to uh, not just the men and women who served overseas, but to our first responders, to all of the Americans who died on 9-11. Uh, frankly, um, it's shocking that he would even do it in the first place. I support us negotiating with the Taliban, but we need to do it as part of a coalition force to figure out a way um, to uh, be able to get troops out of Afghanistan. But to bring the Taliban to Camp David, uh, the ultimate diplomatic uh, meeting place, uh, a place of honor if you get invited to that, um, is shameful. I wanted to also ask you about this withdrawal schedule because the president seems so eager to withdraw, and John Bolton was one of those saying, too soon, too fast, we need to work this out. And it seems that the, there is no one else willing to stand up to the president in the national security team and say, this doesn't work. Mattis quit over this regarding Syria, but Afghanistan is analogous, is it not? It very much is, and, and we've learned uh, over time that any time you put a time, a, a, a date for withdrawing troops is a way to tell the, uh, our enemies, hey, this is when America will be gone. That's not the way you're supposed to do it. And again, we need to be entering into serious negotiations, not as a lone wolf, but with our allies, our NATO allies who've stood to our left and to our right, who've had our backs for all of these years. Um, and I think that this is where Secretary Mattis, uh, you know, he said this, and he quit because the president neglected our allies and we could not have been able to accomplish what we've accomplished had our allies not been there they stood up on 9-11 all those many years ago to support us and we can't just abandon our role that said we do need to negotiate and get out of Afghanistan but we can't do it by ourselves and certainly we shouldn't be doing it by inviting the Taliban to, to Camp David. Senator Tammy Duckworth and I don't need to remind uh, any of us <laughs> certainly that you have made enormous sacrifices in service of the country in war. 
Thank you very much. Thanks Thank for you. your insights today. And joining